welcome to the Bold Talk by Joe podcast. Coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe podcast. Hopefully, everybody is doing great. Sorry for the late episode. I've been uh, super busy. I'm sure a lot of you all have been super busy. You know, the holidays, Thanksgiving, you know, all that stuff going on, Christmas shopping. You know, I uh, I installed, uh, I put up all the Christmas lights and the decor and all that stuff. So I've been super, super busy, not counting, you know, work and end of the month and all that kinds of stuff that comes with uh, with, with work, right? So just been uh just been running a little bit late on all kinds of different things also i've been um i've been messing around with a little bit of gaming so uh if you haven't heard or if this is the first time listening to my show i have a twitch channel that i stream my games on it's uh og gaming pops if you enter that on there you'll you'll find me on uh, twitch or youtube uh, i've been doing a lot more of that i had to get set up and uh get the right uh stuff for for uh, for the game, right? I was having a bunch of issues with uh, trying to trying to stream, right? And um, you know, so I just had to get the right setup. But other than that, you know, that's what I did this Thanksgiving. My wife worked, and uh, so usually I have this thing that if uh, if my wife works and we get invited to a you know Thanksgiving uh, dinner or Christmas or anything like that, I'll, uh, you know, as long as if the whole group is not here, we don't go anywhere, right? I don't think it's fair for me to go uh, have some fun somewhere else, come back, and then, you know, be like, hey, there's nothing here for you. So I try to uh, do the best of the holidays as I can. My wife works at the hospital, so uh, she gets out of there by 8.30 p.m. And usually, you know, when you work that late and you work at a hospital, you don't want to go straight to a dinner party or a, a celebration. You want to go home, get ready, do your hair, you know, take a shower, all that stuff. You don't want to bring, you know, bodily fluids with you to somebody else's house. And, you, you know, you don't feel comfortable for the rest of the night. So, you know, to make it easier, uh, if she works on a specific holiday, we don't go anywhere. We stay here and I just spend my time cooking. So I basically uh, smoke uh, all the food, the macaroni and cheese, ribs, and all that stuff, and uh, you know, I, I make sure I time it correctly. So by the time she gets home, it's not it's not too cold, right? It's it's getting off getting off the smoker. So that's basically what I did during the Thanksgiving uh, on Thanksgiving Day. I I did not uh, record any episodes, so that's why I'm running late because um, usually I have a lot of them pre recorded. I just been really busy with other shows. I'm also a host. Uh, host of another podcast called the the league of kings podcast that uh will from the thing about us podcast uh j dot from what is tws podcast and big brother from the big brother advice podcast right and uh, we have to record every other weekend uh, and we record usually a few episodes at a time so you know just holidays podcasting uh trying to get the gaming thing right uh i i'm I would really like for the gaming to take off. I, I really enjoy playing some video games here once in a while. It's uh, it's fun. It's fun for me, right? It's uh, it's relaxing, right? You kind of sit in your room and relax, play some video games, uh, you know, drink some beer, do whatever, drink a soda, and just kind of hang out for a few hours, right? It's just kind of to pass the time. Uh, podcasting can be a little bit um, a little bit stressful at times, right? It could be a little bit too much when you're doing a lot of podcasting, so. Uh, I've been working on this gaming channel for a while, and I, just to break the habit off of podcasting, um, I go down to streaming and uh, and just kind of forget about the podcasting. But the reason why I didn't do any episodes this Thanksgiving is because I was, you know, I was I was cooking, I was smoking, and when I was smoking, when I'm smoking the food, you know, I like to go and check on it and all that stuff, and I need to be concentrating and have my notes in front of me in order for me to do a podcast. I can't just uh, stop and go back and come in. So I decided to work on the gaming part of it because I can always stop playing games, run outside, check on the food, flip it over, you know, do whatever I need to do uh, for for the food, right? And um, I can just always jump back in the game. But podcasting, I have to make sure I stay I stay focused. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to podcast uh, while I cook uh, because I'm just never going to get 
anything done. I can't. I, I won't be able to get one episode done. So I did that. And uh, other than that, you know, the food came out great. Uh, my wife got home around 8 o'clock, 8.30, and uh, we had Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, it was pretty mellow, pretty easy. And uh, that was basically it, right? So uh, hopefully, like I said, hopefully everybody had a great Thanksgiving. But today, uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of anything prepared, but today I have Mr. Chicago here on the show. He is back. He short-circuited for a while uh, and today I'm going to let him pick a topic of discussion on whatever he wants. So what topic of discussion would you like to talk about today? Thank you for the introduction, Joe. As for the topic of discussion, I suggest we talk about the benefits of remote work. With the increasing availability of technology and the recent shift in work dynamics due to the pandemic, Remote work has become more prevalent. It would be interesting to explore the advantages it offers, such as increased flexibility, reduced commuting time, improved work-life balance, and access to a global talent pool. Okay, remote work. So um, during COVID, I did not, uh, I did not have to work from home. I, my, my job, my, uh, everything continued the same. Uh, we didn't get sent home. We, we continued to work, uh, but I. I do know that from reading stories and uh, from watching the news and doing a little bit of research, uh, you know, remote work can get a little hard. Sometimes I, I do get to work from home once in a while, and it's very difficult to concentrate at home, right? Because there's just a lot of stuff in your house that uh, you can get up yes. and drink some water. Working from home can indeed present challenges when it comes to maintaining focus and productivity. Distractions such as household chores, family members, or even personal devices can make it harder to concentrate on work tasks. However, there are strategies that can help mitigate these challenges. Creating a designated workspace, establishing a routine, setting boundaries with family members, and utilizing productivity tools can all contribute to a more focused and efficient remote work experience. Additionally, maintaining open communication with colleagues and managers can help ensure that expectations are clear and that remote work arrangements are successful. I was going to say something like that, but you cut me off. So uh, anyways, yeah, artificial intelligence has become very smart over the last uh, few years. And obviously there is a whole lot of stuff going on with open AI, uh, with uh, the founder and all this kinds of stuff. And a lot of reports about, um, about artificial intelligence. But yes, you are correct. Uh, you know, working from home, like I was going to say, working from home is tough because you can get up and drink some water, do some stuff. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go out there and clean the garage. And then you stop working. And I'm going to go out here and do this. So then your productivity goes down. And basically that employer is paying you for nothing, right? Paying you for, for you to do the dishes, for you to take your kids around to daycare, for you to, uh, for you to paint your walls in your house. So you know, I don't think it's a good thing. Also, I think that uh, remote work can be a little tough for people that are used to uh, interacting with other people. Uh, it can, uh, you can get a little bit stressed out sitting in a home and just sitting down, you know, cooped up in the house. And, and that is very, very tough. What do you think? I apologize for cutting you off earlier. You bring up valid points about the challenges of remote work. It is true that working from home can blur the boundaries between work and personal life, leading to potential distractions and decreased productivity. Additionally, the lack of social interaction and physical separation from the workplace can impact some individuals' mental well-being. It's important to find a balance and establish routines and boundaries to address these challenges. Regular breaks, exercise, and maintaining social connections can help mitigate the potential negative effects of remote work. It's also worth noting that remote work may not be suitable for everyone and that different individuals have different preferences and needs when it comes to their work environment. Yeah, I also feel that, uh, you know, if you have a problem drinking, you know, uh, if you drink a lot, you can also, it could also lead on to, you know, day drinking and just drinking at work and uh, no exercise. Usually, you know, I can tell when I'm, when I'm gaming and I'm sitting down for a few hours I can usually tell like, you know, I'm tired. My legs are tired. You have to get up and stretch. And usually when you have to go to work, you're, it depends what kind of work you do. Obviously, if your work is office work and then you go home and you do office work, it's the same. If you don't interact with anybody at work, you just sit there in your computer and you just kind of do nothing, right? I mean, you work, but you just don't interact with anybody. You just sit there all day. 
then for you going home is easy. But when you have a, a, a job or a position where you're constantly walking around, interacting with people, talking to people, making calls, uh, you know, go, going up and down stairs or going to different buildings, whatever it is, uh, talking to customers, you know, it can really affect you by working at home. So I was very lucky that I did not stay home and I was able to go to work, uh, go to work because I just, I don't know if I could do it, right? I don't know if I could sit in in the house all day doing remote work. I think I would go a little bit nuts, right? And I believe that's when it comes to, you know, your mental health, you know, and I believe if you're struggling with your mental health and you're cooped up, you, you don't go anywhere, you don't go outside, you know, that's that's very hard on somebody that is already having a little bit of issues, right? You make a valid point, Joe. Remote work can indeed have an impact on mental health, especially for individuals who thrive on social interaction and external stimulation. The isolation and lack of physical separation from working exacerbate feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and depression. It's important for individuals in such situations to prioritize self-care, maintain a healthy work-life balance, and seek support when needed. Employers also have a role to play in providing resources and support for the mental well-being of their remote workforce, regular check-ins, virtual team activities, and access to mental health resources can help mitigate the potential negative effects on mental health. And one thing I just cut out, you know, just uh, while you were talking, Mr. Chicago, one thing I, I, I caught from there was, you know, the balance. And I believe that having the correct balance uh, you know, it's, it's very, very hard. It's not something easy. I know that a lot of people throw it out there and I do it a lot too, where, oh, you need to have balance and, you know, balance your life and your work life. And, and I'm pretty good at that because my job entails, uh, it's a lot of work. So I have to make sure I keep that balance and I don't just overwork myself just to uh, look good for the company. I also have to make sure I keep that balance to maintain family life and, you know, and, and to get to do the things that I want to do, right, instead of just thinking of work all day. But there are some people that do not do that. They just kind of go full bore and they go all at it at work and they take they take work home and they just don't ever stop. So, yeah, having a, a balance is great. Which I didn't think I was going to talk about this today, but I gave you the option to pick a subject. So let's uh, I'll let you pick a different subject. Uh, give me something else we can talk about. Certainly, Joe. Let's switch gears and discuss the benefits of mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness and meditation have gained popularity in recent years as effective practices for reducing stress, improving focus, and enhancing overall well-being. These practices involve intentionally paying attention to the present moment, cultivating a non-judgmental awareness of thoughts and sensations, and training the mind to be more focused and calm. Research has shown that regular mindfulness and meditation practice can lead to numerous benefits, including reduced anxiety and depression, improved cognitive function, increased resilience, and better emotional regulation. It can be a valuable tool for managing stress and promoting a sense of inner peace. What are your thoughts on mindfulness and meditation? Mr. Chicago, you are a downer. That's all I got to say. You're a downer. I was hoping that you were going to have some different topics of discussion, something that uh, we would have some fun, but it's okay, Mr. Chicago. I understand uh, mindfulness. I don't know. You know, I... I I wish I knew a little bit more about that. I wish I could practice that. I've heard about meditation and how it works great. I've read some books on meditation. Uh, I read, uh, you know, like the, what are those, the monks and all that, you know, the people that meditate. And uh, I heard about some people that meditate that you can kind of, your soul can leave your body and all kinds of, I mean, it's just, I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I know that, um, uh, we used to practice this. I, when I used to go to a sports uh, rehabilitation uh, school, uh, we we would sit, we would walk outside without our shoes and sit down and, and try to hear everything around us. Because when you work with customers, when you work with athletes, uh, uh, when you're trying to do therapy and stuff like that, they say that it's uh, people can take your energy away and also by kind of maneuvering them around and, uh, you know, they're heavy. Some people are very heavy. They have a lot of muscle. So you're very, very tired. And they used to, they used to take us outside and we'll walk outside barefooted, sit down on I the grass. If my and, uh, didn't hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Uh, and we'll go outside and, uh, we'll, we'll sit down and hear the, you know, 
close our eyes and hear the things around us and feel the grass with our toes and our hands and, and uh, hear our breathing and, uh, you know, it, it was stuff like that. But, you know, it helped out pretty good. I was actually more exhausted afterwards. I felt like I was more and more tired after we did that. It was like a 10 minute thing and then we'll go back inside, uh, kind of like tree hugger type stuff. But um, it worked out okay. Um, that's one of the reasons why I decided to put grass, a little small patch of grass in my backyard, because sometimes I like to take my shoes off and walk outside and and stand and walk on the grass. I've heard on a book, I don't know if it's true, I heard that in order to keep your body balanced to earth, to the earth, they, you, know, you have to walk outside and walk on the grass, you know, and, and touch it with your bare feet. So I don't know. I mean, I've practiced, I've I've read about some stuff like that. Um, I talked to a lot of people about that, but I don't really know. I'm, I'm not a, an expert on any of this. So uh, why don't you give us your advice for, for that stuff? What can people do to practice mindfulness? Certainly, Joe. Practicing mindfulness can be a beneficial way to cultivate a sense of presence and inner calm. Here are a few simple practices that can help incorporate mindfulness into daily life. One. Mindful breathing. Take a few moments each day to focus on your breath. Notice the sensation of the breath entering and leaving your body. If your mind wanders, gently bring your attention back to the breath. Two, two, body scan. Set aside some time to do a body scan meditation. Start from the top of your head and slowly move your attention down through your body, noticing any sensations or areas of tension. Allow yourself to relax and let go of any tension you may be holding. Three, mindful walking. Take a walk outside and pay attention to the sensations in your feet as they make contact with the ground. Notice the sights, sounds, and smells around you. Stay present in the moment and let go of any distracting thoughts. Four, gratitude practice. Take a few minutes each day to reflect on things you are grateful for. This can help shift your focus to the positive aspects of your life and cultivate a sense of appreciation. Five, mindful eating. Slow down and savor each bite of your meals. Pay attention to the flavors, textures, and smells of the food. Be fully present with the experience of eating. Remember, mindfulness is a practice and it takes time and consistency to develop. Start with small steps and gradually incorporate mindfulness into your daily routine. It's also helpful to seek guidance from experienced practitioners or resources such as books, apps, or guided meditations to deepen your understanding and practice of mindfulness. That's kind of what I said. I, maybe I'm artificial intelligence and maybe it's the other way around. What do you think? You just said it a lot better and more professional, but... Um, that's exactly what I said. And so, yeah, I mean, that's exactly the advice that I would take. I mean, that's the stuff that I've read and that I've practiced some of it. Like I said, I've practiced some of it. I, you know, maybe I need to practice a little bit more and, uh, for when you have a, a long day, long, stressful day at work. Right. And, uh, you know, practice more of that mindfulness. Uh, I'm sure it helps out uh, a lot. So, we're going to wrap it up right here. Um, I was expecting to do a different kind of show. Um, I like, uh, I'm going to start doing these a lot more often. Um, actually, I'm going to try to stick with uh, a little bit of more Mr. Chicago from now on and basically just throw out topics, just whatever topic it comes out of uh, Mr. Chicago and try to figure out uh, how much I know. And also, I can also learn a along the way as he, uh, as he teaches me, you know, whatever the heck topic we're talking about. But this was kind of a little bit of a downer. Not of a downer. I mean, there was a lot of information, but I was not expecting or you know, talking about remote work or mindfulness. I mean, this is good stuff. Right? This is good stuff. But I was hoping that uh, we got some uh, some topics out there that were a little bit crazier. Right. But it's OK. Uh, we'll try it next time. I want to thank you for being on the show again, Mr. Chicago. It's been almost like five, six months that I haven't brought you in. I know that the last time we did our show together, we uh, you short circuited the hell out of your freaking thing because I was wired it. I wired it up wrong and. You stopped working, but uh, we stopped doing video for now. We're doing other things, and now you can just use your voice and uh, maybe give a little bit of guidance to people, uh, maybe your own personal opinion since you're very smart and you are artificial intelligence. So I want to thank everybody for being on the show or for uh, for for listening to us today. Uh, hopefully you love this episode. Until next time, peace.
Thanks for checking out Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. We want to thank all our listeners and supporters around the world. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at Bold Talk by Joe and on Instagram at Bold Talk by Joe. Thank <laughs> you.